oh, uh, I believe I'm the right person for this job because I'm very uh, feminine for this role. My feminineness, feminine uh, sexuality, feminine personality will add value to this feminine role in the most feminine way possible. Stop getting the wrong advice. Ensure you get the right skills for the right job for jobs in the Middle East. Contact Loy Macedo. Hi there, Loy Macedo. Speaking to you from LoyMacedo.com. Who is Loy Macedo and Think Personal Branding? All right, uh, a couple of updates that I just want to give you, so I'll get to the point. First, uh, a couple of uh, announcements. Uh, the first one is uh, I'm going to have a uh, interview with a senior BJP leader who is based in India. He has agreed to come on my uh, show. And uh, he'll be sharing with me his thoughts. And uh, I'll be asking him the difficult questions which uh, most of us like to ask. Like, for example, is uh, the BJP government, is it a, a you know, extreme Hindu nationalistic party? Are they anti-Muslim? Are they anti-whatever? Do they believe in, you know, all these uh, religious um, um, theories that if you drink cow piss and cow urine, it's going to heal uh, COVID-19? So I'm going to ask him these tough questions. Is going to be featured in uh, my video, which is going to come within a day or two. So that would be next. Um, apart from that, um, I also wanted to address a problem. Okay, I'll start off with addressing this problem, which I thought is very necessary uh, to avoid misunderstanding. See, um, many of you send me your resumes, which I forward to uh, you know decision makers. Now. I am not the decision maker. They are not employing someone because Loy Macedo has forwarded it to them. They trust me. They trust my content and they say, okay, fine, Loy, if there is anyone, send it across to me. So if in case you get selected or you don't get selected, it has nothing got to do with me. And I've also made it very clear to you that I do not know all those people for example, there are 19 people who have asked me, send me the resumes for these various categories. I forward it to them. Now, are they good people? Are they bad people? I don't know. Even if they are good people, do they have good intentions? I don't know. You know, they can be even really good people, but if they see a very beautiful girl, maybe they lose control. So, uh, you know, you need to be... Uh, you need to be alert. You need to be aware of what is happening. And they can also be scammers. As far as possible, I try to verify. But I've told you, if any one of them asks you money or they try to scam or cheat you, inform me as soon as possible. Now, the reason why I say this is because I don't want to get embroiled in uh, any kind of law. He asked me this question. He asked. It's you know, I'm not to be involved in it. And don't if you get called for an interview, please don't start harassing me, you know, saying, please, Loy, please tell him that I need the job badly. I went for an interview. I, you know, I'm begging you, please stop. Just stop. Relax. Okay. I'm doing whatever I can, but I'm not going to deal with each and every individual person whom I'm sharing these, uh, you know, resumes for free. Okay. That's uh, the second thing. The third thing that I want to uh, share is if you are my client, if you're my client and I make your profile, I make your resume, I rebrand you. And if there is more than one person whose um, details I forward to the decision maker, and let's say A and B both were my clients, I gave the credentials of both A and B to the client. Obviously, I'm not going to inform A, A, listen, I sent B's uh, data also, or I'm not going to tell B and C and D and all of them. I just forward it to them. They decide who they want. Now, one of the uh, clients of mine got a job and this person happened to speak to the other person who also came to me for a resume. Hey man, I got a job. What about you? So now the person who didn't get the job was pissed off with me. Hey man, I paid you money. You know what the fuck? Because she's beautiful, because she's hot. You kind of kissed his ass and gave... listen, listen, <sighs> you know, the problem is because of this crisis, because of the tension that people have, maybe because they're sitting at home doing nothing. People have nothing else to do other than just conjure up conspiracy theories. I do not get any benefit if any one of you gets a job. It's out of courtesy that I forward your credentials to them. So if someone gets a job, it's not because I saw her boobs were big or her ass was tight or her body was good or she gave me a virtual blow job that I decided to you know, convince the owner, please take her. 
See, what the owner does is up to him. Maybe he likes the person. Maybe he doesn't like your face. Maybe he may be turned on by her. I don't know. So please understand that the human element comes into factor. I am not the person who makes these decisions. They are the ones. I am a trust agent. Trust agent means someone they trust. And I'm a facilitator where I forward these credentials to them. Does it work? Does it not? That is subjective. And that is, it goes from case to case base. So I want to make this very clear because I don't want misunderstanding. I've worked very hard to build this brand. I don't want your bullshit theories to suddenly they, oh, because her boobs were big, he, you know, decided to forward. Listen, man, even if your boobs are really fucking big, okay, it's online. When do you fucking get, I, I, I don't understand how these people even, how do you even get a fucking job if you start thinking like a fucking idiot? Your job, your job is to get a bloody job. You come to me so that I sharpen your skills. I make you more presentable. I, I make sure that you stand out from the rest of the crowd. But when you go for the interview, I can also help you sharpen those skills. But then finally, if you're not likable or he doesn't like you or he cannot connect with you, I can't be held responsible. I hope that is clear. Okay, next one. Now, these are the updates that I want to give you with regards to what is happening in the country. And there was also a question asked with regards to Bangladeshis, whether they are getting job because I got some Bangladeshi clients who took my services. Two of them have got jobs, two of them. Okay, out of the very many. So Bangladeshis are getting jobs. Now they are getting visas provided all your documents are in place, provided you're educated, provided you know you you work under the right sponsor of the right company. If you are very quality very well qualified but the company you're working for is crap and has a terrible reputation or terrible record, they might not get a visa. Okay. So there are plenty of variables here. So I, I just want to make that clear. Okay. Uh, in uh, with regards to the travel industry, uh, I checked with my friend who's at a very senior position. What he said is right now, you know, they are kind of balancing. Okay, uh, the terminations have stopped for some time, for some time. Oman Air has started firing people or telling people go on paid leave. You have other airlines also telling people go on a paid leave. Um, I spoke to just somebody sent me a message today. Law, you, you stated that uh, the airport is getting full, but we are still not being called for work. Give it time. The economy takes time to recover. Companies take time. It's, it's not going to back to normal, just everything like as if nothing happened. Imagine. Uh, almost nine months without revenue. So it takes time. Okay. Now, uh, next one is I want to speak to you about the headlines, four major headlines which concern and people wanted to know my opinion. The first one is with regards to Qatar. Uh, Qatar, it seems, announced that there is no uh, that there's going to be a minimum wage. There's going to be no. Uh, they are going to cancel the the sponsorship law that you need a NOC from the sponsor. They're going to remove that, and they are going to make the laws more friendly towards workers. Okay. So if you read this article here, what it says is the country scraps the need for employers' permission before changing jobs. Minimum wage is set at thousand Qatari rials. Okay. That's around two hundred and seventy-four US dollars. It's especially for migrant workers because Qatar has had a very bad reputation, just like all other countries in the Middle East, where they treat migrant workers in a horrible way, very, very horrible way. Okay. Um, under Qatar's kafala, that is Arabic word for sponsorship system, migrant workers need to obtain the employee's permission, NOC, before changing jobs. The law uh, that rights activists said. Okay. Now here, I would just like to tell you that let's not assume that all the laborers are innocent. Let's not assume, let's not portray the poor laborers are all innocent, hunky-dory, very loving, very sweet, poor babies. You know, they do their job. No. Some, most of them, most of them are fucking assholes. Okay. I'm, I'm telling you this. Most of, how I know this? Because I've worked with laborers. I worked in companies where laborers are there. You know, these are the very same people whom my ex boss on their birthday used to give them a cross pen, gold uh, plated cross pen. He used to give them, um, you know, he, he used to give them gifts for their family. He had given them interest free loans. These buggers, 
they they were saying in their own language they used to say what will take this pen and shove it up our ass give us money man who the fuck cares about you they used to talk between themselves in front they used to act nice he used to even give them subsidized food and they protested and said we want fish chicken and all that you know so these people are not so fucking innocent so don't act as if you know all these labor i'll i'll tell you this if you think laborers are innocent go down to india with let's say a lady go with a couple of them in certain areas and i'll tell you they will not spare your wife your child your daughter anybody okay these are not all innocent hunky dory these are people who have been born and raised in very tough environments that is why when you have uh, arab muslims who suddenly go to germany who suddenly go to europe and they see all these girls wearing skimpy clothes and young girls they suddenly uh, get berserk they become like animals in heat for them every girl is meant to be raped and uh, you know uh, uh, like it's like being an animal okay because why why it's not because muslims are bad you do it with anybody who has not seen you for example a prison inmate christian hindu muslim sikh anybody a guy who has been in prison who has only seen you know dicks and cocks and guys and all of a sudden he gets to see a female uh, he will explode he'll be like oh he can't control himself in the same way these guys in Muslim Arabs, they come from very conservative countries. All of a sudden, they see all these girls and all these naked bodies. They can't control. Why do you think so many Saudi men go to Bahrain, go to uh, Thailand, go to Vietnam? Why do you think so many of these, even Western expats, why do you think these 60, 70 year old Australians, Americans, British, they come to Thailand and they befriend a girl who's old enough to be their granddaughter. Why? Because that is their sexual fantasy. In their country, in Europe, in Australia, if they were to date a girl who's 18, there would be tremendous backlash from, you know, the, the place where they stay. But when they go to these third world countries, it's considered cool, normal, you know. So the point I'm trying to make here is these laws that are changing for the benefit of migrant workers, my fear, my fear is these guys will try to take advantage and then like a rubber band, it'll snap back. I know plenty of my friends who are businessmen who are having a hell of a time. They can't tolerate these laborers. And they tell them, you either take it or leave it, you know, just fuck off. Because many of them, they spend 10,000 dirhams per head, get them on board, get them to the country, give them a new life, and then they don't work. They say, no, I don't want to work. I want to go back. So you need to understand that there is a reason why these laws are in place. And if in case, uh, let's say these Arab countries, they change the laws and make it very expensive for them to get laborers, they'll not get Indian laborers. They'll, not, they'll say, better not to get Indian, Pakistani, Bangladesh. Better not to get. Better, we, better we'll get, uh, you know, somebody else. So the point I'm trying to make you understand here is, um, it's, it takes two hands to clap. So yes, on one hand, these people are being taken advantage of. Yes, there are certain Arabs and Muslim countries where they treat them inhuman. But at the same time, these laborers are not, um, let's say, saints. So let's not act as if all laborers... It, the best proof and evidence that I'll give you is check any resume in the world. All of them look like God's gift to mankind. They seem like the perfect employee, perfect worker, perfect person. I'm hardworking. I'm dedicated. I'm focused. I'm result oriented. But look at your office. Look at your colleagues. One will be a gossip monger. One will be fucking lazy. One will be a slut. One will be, uh, you know, uh, a person who spreads rumors. One will be just, you know, like they say, calm chore, just escapes from work. So you have different personalities you know but you can never see this you know uh, in a resume in the same way all these workers they might look like poor fellow poor fellow but i'll tell you some of them are really fucking rotten so let's not paint everyone with the same brush that's all i'm saying for me personally i see this as just uh, you know eye wash for just to you know uh, get away from all the unwanted attention and remember this is Al Jazeera speaking about Qatar which is based in Qatar they will never say anything negative about Qatar or about the monarch they will say only positive stuff just as UAE's media speaks good about UAE Saudi's media speaks good about Saudi in the same way they will also do the same thing for me until it happens I'll not be I'll not believe this and after it happens it's it's to be seen how long will they sustain and survive. As far as I know, old habits die hard. It's impossible for them to change their true nature. It's just not going to happen. Okay, it's just not going to happen. That's as far as it goes. You can let me know what do you think. The second news that I want to share with you is uh, September 30th. This is register or face penalties. Hawala providers in the UAE told. Now, I'll give you my views on this. 
Okay, what is a Hawala? Hawala is, um, you know, known as Hundi. And if you ask a Malayali, it'll be Kundi. Kundi means ass. But we're not talking of that Undi. We're talking of Hundi. Hundi is, an, it sounds funny, but it's an unofficial and informal channel to transfer money. It's like a person. He, uh, I, I, I don't know how it works because I've never done it. Okay, I've never done it, so I wouldn't know it. But it seems that these guys, what they do is, uh, instead of being transferred from legal channels, these guys, they operate through their network and they transfer the money without it being documented maybe to avoid taxes or maybe to avoid charges. And uh, they do pay a little bit extra to these guys, but the money is transferred without being documented. So they don't have to pay taxes. They don't have, it's not documented. And this is a good way to transfer black money. Now UAE all of a sudden says, oh, okay, fine, you, you guys who do this hundi kundi stuff, you just register with me and we'll keep it legal. For me, it, uh, for me, this sounds so fucking stupid. It's like saying we are a country that punishes pedophiles. But what we are doing is you can register yourself as a pedophile. So we'll not punish you. Yeah. So people are going, yeah, yeah, I'm a pedophile. Yeah, 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 yeah man. I'm a pedophile. Yeah. Do you seriously think people are going to come forward and tell that I'm doing something illegal? I'm a guy who does illegal stuff. No, it's, it's so fucking stupid, man. It's like asking a person who is addicted to sex. Hey, um, listen, since you're addicted to sex, tell us so that we know we'll keep a record, but we'll not tell anyone about it. It's a secret, you know, like you can use the Internet, like Google says and Facebook says, no, we have all your data, which makes us the most powerful people in the world where we can get billions, not millions, billions of dollars through advertising revenue. But we are not going to use your data, man. You can trust us just give us all your data we are not going to use it it's it's so fucking stupid this this again i i don't understand why the fuck do they even put these laws this is fucking stupid this is just for eyewash just like other this again is eyewash just to say oh look we are no more money laundering we are not money laundering we are not count we are not uh what do you say punishing terror no 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 yeah right yeah right i i totally believe it uh us is not spying on anyone's phones nothing. Everyone's innocent. Everyone's nice. This world is a beautiful place. Okay. Next one. If you th thought this was stupid, yes, you have uh, UAE comes out with this new rule. Like I said, uh, UAE's advisors, I don't know, maybe their head is up their ass or maybe they put their head up their ass because it seems here, August 28, 2020, Filipinos in UAE must have a 10,000 dirham salary to get an affidavit to support their visiting relatives, which is so fucking stupid. And I'll tell you why. Okay. As per this article, it says the new income uh, requirement uh, for the affidavit to, of support and guarantee ASG is an updated policy that took effect uh, from August 24th. Uh, details are published on the Philippines Consulate General in uh, Dubai and the Embassy of Abu Dhabi. For a single expat who wishes to sponsor a rela relative, he must now show proof of 10,000 dirhams. And for married couple, 14,000 dirhams. And a family of four, either a husband or wife of two children or a single parent of three children, 18,000 dirhams. Wow. Very good. Very good. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yes. You know why? Why am I clapping? Because can you show me how many Filipinos get very high income? Filipinos are the hardest working people I've known. I personally know Filipinos. They are amazing. They're fucking creative. They're incredible. The only drawback, if you can check my video, my uh, the video where I criticize Filipinos, being the most fucking creative, the most incredible. You'll hear the best songs from Filipinos. You'll hear the, you'll see the best artistic drawing only from Filipinos. Almost all fashion designers, Filipinos, they are the creme de la creme when it comes to creativity in the Middle East. I'll tell you. But you know why the fuck they get fucked? from uh, photography, videography, they are amazing. But you know why they get fucked? Because of the crab mentality. Filipinos are just like South Indians. They pull themselves down. You know, it's so funny because they eat together. They stay together. They are everything together. They'll, you'll never see an Indian, uh, Indian club, Indian runners club that works well. But a Filipino running club will work very well. You'll never see a Filipi Indian triathlete club. But a Filipino triathlete club, you'll see mil you know, not millions, sorry, thousands. Okay, or even if not thousands, at least 20, 30. Filipinos are amazing, incredible, athlete, athletic, creative people. But they don't fucking support it. They just are, you know, they're so fucking jealous of each other. They pull down each other. They gossip amongst each other. That is why with all the talent in the world, they get fucked. Now, that is enough and more problem over there. On top of that, 
they i don't know why i just don't know why maybe because of the filipino peso they get paid very fucking less very very less between an indian and a filipino a filipino gets paid less lesser than an indian maybe it's because their education is not good maybe because i don't know but i'll tell you look at their hygiene look at their grooming skills look at their presentability world class I have personally dated only Filipino girls, so many Filipino girls. They are incredible. I love the Filipino community. From Crispy Pata to Bulalao to uh, uh, Bukobandan. I, I love the Filipino cuisine. I love Filipinos. I, I think they're amazing. My tattoos were done by Filipinos. Okay? But it's sad that they get paid less. And now with this fucko law, these poor Filipinos, they'll never be able to bring their families. It, they, they'll just not... I'll, I'll tell you this, there are so many Filipinos who are supporting their children, their mother, their father, their, uh, especially women. They are, they are taking care of entire families back home. The, the Filipino boys are a little bit mischievous. Well, maybe because they can't hold their sausage in a nice way. So they go around making all the girls pregnant. That's why you'll see always a Filipino pregnant or has babies and all. But they are amazing mothers. They are amazing women. They take care of their families. But with this fucking law... They'll not be able to support their family. What the fuck are you guys doing? I don't know who the fuck gives the advice to the UAE government. Man, listen, scrape this fucking law. Before it was 3,500 dirhams. Now you made it 10,000 fucking dirhams. The Filipinos will not bring their family. You will not have anyone spending money in UAE. And you're going to fucking regret it. Instead of making life easier, you're making life difficult. Filipinos have good purchasing power. They spend money. Filipinos spend money. Indians don't. That is why Indians are conjuice. But you'll never see a Filipino. A Filipino will spend money on fashion, on products, on, on stuff. Why are you doing this? This is so fucking stupid. For me personally, I find it very stupid. You have just shot yourself in the foot. Now Filipinos are going to keep their parents, their children, everyone back home. And they're going to send this money back home. You are digging your fucking grave. It's so fucking stupid here. And then the climax of stupidity. The climax of stupidity is Dubai announces the first of its kind, kind, kind. You know, I'm giving effect. The retirement visa program, 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 program. Another fucking stupid shit. Why? I'll tell you why. Any resident or retiree outside of UAE over the age of 55 can apply for a retirement visa. So, what is it? His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President and Prime Minister of UAE and Ruler of Dubai in Wednesday launched the initiative for retirees around the world who apply a retirement visa in Dubai. Khalid Times, you made a spelling mistake of retirement. Okay, please check your spelling. Okay. Applicants can apply under the retirement in Dubai program, which is the first of a kind in the region, uh, that's all fuck all. Okay, in cooperation between tourism and Gulf administra general administration and re residency of foreign affairs. Okay, w what the fuck is it? Any resident or retiree outside of UAE and over the age of 55 can apply for a retirement visa via the website www.retireindubai.com. Okay, terms and conditions obtain a visa renewable every five years. Okay, fine. They're not getting to the point. What is to the point? If you want the visa, first, show us a 20,000 dirham income per month. Okay? You're retired. Who's going to pay you fucking 20,000 dirhams? Okay, that's number one. Second one is, or you need to have investments of pension of only, only 1 million dirhams. Talian, Talian. 1 million. Okay. Or you need to have a real estate of 2 million dirhams. So, what they're trying to say is, take your money, put it in the bank, let us have liquidity, at your expense, then you can put your sorry ass in some building and stay there as a retired guy. So you're putting 1 million. 1 million interest, which you can comfortably earn in a third world country and relax with two girls, one giving you a blow job and one, another one licking your asshole. Okay, here you come in the heat and die. Who the fuck is going to do that? Most of these retirees would rather go to a third world country, put the money in the bank, enjoy the fucking interest and shag as many girls as they want or live a life of their dreams. The only reason why they'll come to UAE, only reason is they have money that they don't want it, you know, um, they don't want it taxed. They don't want to put this money back home and then they'll have to reveal where did you get the money from? Okay, you'll have to pay 35 or 45% tax. So those who are used to UAE's weather, better in the sense lifestyle they want to continue being there without having to go back so instead of this one million putting in the bank instead of that just take a fucking uh, what do you call that um, uh, free zone visa take a fucking free zone visa uh, 5,000 or 10,000 or 15,000 you know per year finish you don't have to fucking worry there are so many people who are selling fucking visas 
they just have to take that. You know, if you open up a company and put it under your name, you don't have to fucking worry, man. You can even take a creative fucking visa. Who the fuck is going to work? Uh, what I feel is the reason they're putting all this, again, I wash. The reason why they're doing this is to say, see, listen, guys, any one of you has money, we have plenty of options where we can make your black money into white. Um, retirement visa, put it here. Okay, uh, property, put it there. Oh, investment here. So this is all that they're doing. And this is all fucking bullshit. According to me, this is bullshit. You can tell me, would you go for it? Here's my question. Would you go for it? Because as far as I know, I know a lot of people would prefer to go back home to their country. That's either the first option or to a, th a third world country where they can stay like a fucking king off the radar, off Facebook, off social media and enjoy the rest of their lives quietly with a young girl. That's what my, many of them are doing. Okay, uh, final couple of announcements which I just want to tell you. Uh, this this uh, is a... This is a, first a funny one. Uh, someone sent me the f image of The Rock and this. He's saying that he got COVID and all that. Uh, you know... Actually, if you look at the rock, he looks like he, his face actually looks like, you know, his head shape looks like, you know, I don't want to say it. He actually looks like a penis head, you know, a dick head. I don't know, all these surgeries and all these steroids and all the stuff that he has taken over the years. The rock can be, you can change the name from the rock to the cock. You know, his, his head looks like a penis head, man. But seriously, I mean, relax, Rock, stop taking all that, whatever you're taking to have those big muscles and the surgeries and all that. Because if you check the Rock in WWE from those days when he was young and now, even he even had bitch gyno, that is bitch tits, okay? Uh, just check uh, uh, that, uh, that Singh, what, what is that wrestler, uh, Jag Jaginder Singh or whatever the fuck his name is. Uh, he was a wrestling champion. They have, uh, you know, if you take too much of HGH, you tend to get gynecomastia. Just Google search gynecomastia. Uh, there's water retention in your nipples. So even um, The Rock had that. He got surgery, obviously. See, I, I understand their life is very stressful and they have a very tough life and they have to undergo all these surgeries and all this HGH and all that. And yes, they do work hard. But if you actually look at The Rock, he seriously looks like the cock right now. So that was my first thing that I observed. You know, it must be, his head looks like a dick, you know. Mine looks round, but his look like a... Nice one. Anyway, you can tell me if I'm right or wrong. Okay, last but not the least, last but not the least, uh, the reason I'm saying this last is because I wanted to give a shout out to a small girl who's five year old. It seems she watches my videos, which she shouldn't be doing. Actually, shouldn't be doing because I use a lot of stuff that shouldn't be heard by children. Okay, but anyway, having said that, Anyway, my daughter is going to listen to it because my daughter is different. I'm going to educate her what to say and what not to say. But anyway, this five-year-old girl from UAE, her name is Lakisha Hotwani. Okay, that's a really nice name, Hotwani. But I'm going to save my funny jokes for her. Okay, so the haughty girl, Lakisha, it seems she's very smart. Her dad says she's amazing, she's smart, she is, I'm sure she's very beautiful and I'm sure she's very gifted and talented. So please guys, put something really nice and positive so Lakisha can read it. Let's be, you know, let's be nice to her. Remember, you'll get blocked and banned if you put something that is hurtful to her. I don't mind for me, but... Be nice to her. So her name is L-E-K-I-S-H-A, Lakisha, L-E-K-I-S-H-A, Hotwani. That's a nice name. That means you're a very hot girl. Good. From the Hotwani family. Okay. She's five years old and she watches my video. She gave me a nice um, message. Thank you very much. She's from Dubai Gems. Study hard. Be a good girl and uh, take care of your dad. Your dad loves you very much. Okay. And uh, be good. And please don't watch my videos without <laughs> consulting your dad because, uh, you know, some of my videos are crazy. So, Lakisha, I just want to say hi to you. You're five year old. You shouldn't be watching my videos, but since you're watching, I want to say hi to you. A big hi, big hi. Just, mm, just uh, give him a flying kiss, whatever. Hope your dad doesn't mind. Hope your mom doesn't feel bad, you know, giving you. You know, family kiss, family kiss. Okay, whatever. So anyway, this is what I wanted to say. Um, 
I'll one day introduce my baby girl to you so you both can be friends online. So that's what it is. Um, guys, I just wanted to pass on this message. Give regards to Lakeisha. She watches my shows. She shouldn't be doing. Dad, be careful. Make sure that you first listen to my whole video and then decide what she should hear and what she shouldn't hear. Having said that, guys, this is me signing off for now. Thank you very much. Any information, let me know. And um, yes, I have plenty of emails to answer because there are these job opportunities. But then again, remember what I've told you. It's not in my hands who gets the job, who doesn't get. We just do our very best and that we leave the rest to whomsoever. Okay, this is me signing off. You guys take care. Oh, uh, I believe I'm the right person for this job because I'm very uh, feminine for this role. My feminineness, feminine uh, sexuality, feminine personality will add value to this feminine role in the most feminine way possible. Stop getting the wrong advice. Ensure you get the right skills for the right job for jobs in the Middle East. Contact Loy Macedo.